For about 137 million years, the continent of South America was an island continent, having split from Africa and drifting across the shrinking Pacific Ocean and growing Atlantic Ocean. By the time it had split from Africa, the dinosaurs had taken over the continent like the rest of the world and it continued to evolve similarly to dinosaurs elsewhere in the Southern Hemisphere. But after the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs, as the mammals began to take over the available niches throughout the world, South America included, a very interesting thing happened specifically with South America. Rather than mammalian predators evolving to take over those niches that the theropod dinosaurs left behind, the dinosaurs effectively came back in the form of one of the most iconic animals from the Cenozoic era, the terror birds. Welcome back to Paleopedia, and the terror birds are an extinct group of predatory flightless birds from South America that lived on that continent for about 43 million years. Known scientifically as the forest rockets, the terror birds were a very diverse and successful predatory group of birds. Generally, the terror birds ranged from around 3 feet in height to up to 11 feet in height, with the largest potential specimen weighing around 770 pounds. And with a few other mammalian predators alongside them, namely Thylacosmilus, the marsupial saber tooth, the terror birds were the sole predators on South America, and they dominated that ecosystem. When you look at the skeleton of the terror birds, especially the larger ones, you can see some very clear predatory adaptations in there. For starters, they were very large and very slender, with very long legs with hooked claws, indicating that they were capable of running really, really fast. Their necks are also long and sturdy, yet very flexible, but the most key feature about their predatory nature are their heads. Unlike other extinct groups of giant flightless birds, such as the Gastornids or the Dromanithids, the forest rockets, the terror birds, were clearly predatory just by the shape of their skull alone. Their heads were absolutely huge, with their massive beaks making up the majority of that, but the key feature is the tip of the beak itself. Bird beaks are highly adapted based on what type of food they're generally feeding on, and most predatory birds have a hooked tip at the end of their beaks, and the terror birds have this exact same thing. Combine that with the claws on the end of their toes and their overall body design, it's very clear that the terror birds were specifically designed for moving quickly and being predatory in nature. In fact, it's believed that the terror birds use their beaks as their primary weapon in taking down prey, especially larger prey. The muscles in their necks were very well developed and very powerful, designed for quick, rapid, downward movement. Combine this with the overall strength of the skull itself, which was very powerful, it appears as though the terror birds used their neck and bills as a form of axe and handle, lifting their heads up and swinging it down quickly to strike at their prey. Based on studies around its movement abilities, it appears as though the terror birds were built for fast and relatively agile running, capable of reaching speeds up to 30 miles an hour. The way that they carried themselves on their feet was also indicative of a predatory lifestyle. It appears as though the first two digits of their feet were designed so that their claws were lifted off the ground, not dissimilar to their non-avian cousins, the dromaeosaurs, velociraptor and euteraptor and those guys. This suggests that the terror birds utilized their legs and their feet as weapons and holding mechanisms, holding down prey, while simultaneously being adapted for those fast running speeds without damaging their claws. Originally, it was actually assumed that the terror birds were more adapted to hunting smaller prey because they don't appear to have a very powerful bite force. These predators appeared to rely more on a driving force rather than a crushing bite to take down larger prey. Rather than relying on an overall stronger bite force, it seems these predators primarily rely on a few other adaptations, including a cutting edge like teeth or a beak, being capable of opening their jaws really wide, and a reinforced skull backed up by powerful neck muscles to compensate for relatively weaker jaw muscles. And based on some other studies suggesting that the terror birds, while really fast sprinters, weren't capable of sharp turns, this all leads towards the idea that these birds were more specialized in hunting fast, large prey on the open plains. 
This made the terror birds the dominant predator on the plains of South America, hunting a wide variety of animals like Toxodon, Macrochenia, and several others. And because of their top predator status in the South American food web, these were one of the few animals that actually successfully migrated north during the Great American Interchange. Around two and a half to three million years ago, South America finally collided with North America through the Isthmus of Panama, and this caused a mass migration primarily from North America to South America, but in the case of the terror birds from South America to North America. While South America was primarily dominated by the predatory terror birds, North America had several other predatory groups, including bears, cats, and dogs. And all of those predators were overall better adapted to hunting wider forms of prey. And as they migrated into South America, they kind of quickly took over South America's ecosystem as the top predators. And it seems as though the terror birds just weren't able to really keep up with these new North American mammalian predators and pretty quickly started getting pushed out of their environments. But one species, Titanus, actually ended up successfully pushing into southern North America. Titanus lived in southern North America from about 5 million years to about 1.5 million years ago, so it successfully established itself as a predator in southern North America. Now you might have noticed something in there, that Titanus made it to North America before South America actually connected with North America. And we don't know exactly how Titanus was able to do this, although it seems probable that it was able to island hop through the many islands forming that area between the two continents at the time. No matter how it got to North America, it was successful at establishing itself as a likely top predator in southern North America for several million years. Originally, it was assumed that competition with mammalian predators led to the overall extinction of the terror birds, but Titanus' success in North America suggests that the group was capable of successfully establishing their own spot in the new food web. It was also theorized that human arrival led to the extinction of most of the terror birds, but most terror birds actually had gone extinct about one and a half million years ago prior to the arrival of humanity. For me, it appears as though the best answer to how did the terror birds go extinct is a combination of events, predator competition and climate change. Now again, clearly the terror birds were capable of establishing themselves as successful predators alongside their newfound mammalian competition, like in North America with Titanus. But that was after the group overall saw a steady decrease after the American interchange as mammalian predators migrated into South America. And then the planet began to cool into the first of the several ice ages since, after North and South America collided cutting off a key ocean current that ran between the two continents. This is what likely spelled the extinction for the terror birds overall, but some smaller species did survive for a while afterwards. One species specifically, known as Silapterus, appeared to have lived up to possibly 3,500 years ago, so very, very recent. But of course, the giant predatory terror birds of South America are no more, but they are remembered by one other bird species. The Sirema's occupy a niche similar, it seems, on a smaller scale to the historical terror birds. They have long legs, they're predatory, they feed on smaller animals like frogs, mice, lizards, snakes, those guys, but they are still capable of flight, but they are the sister group to the extinct terror birds now. The terror birds are one of my favorite groups of animals to talk about because they are the successful re-establishment predators of the former dinosaur era. Outside of a couple places like New Zealand and for around 15 to 20 million years North America, South America was the only place after the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs that the last dinosaurs, the birds, established themselves as top predator. And they established themselves as top predator all the way up until very recent history. They were an ultimate success group of the last group of dinosaurs that existed. While I'm sad that they're gone, it's probably a good thing that they're gone because it's almost certain that if they lived up into the modern day, we would probably have been on the menu for these giant predator birds.